What's going on, y'all? It's JD Pakel today on the channel. We got Grayson Grunhafer bringing the heat. You are not going to want to miss a second of his silky smooth voice. Hope y'all enjoy. Welcome in to CFB with JD. And of course, I am not JD. I'm your host today, Grayson Grunhafer, and we are going to be talking about probably one of the biggest quarterback debates probably in the last year as far as it goes for recruiting purposes. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, uh, what about Arch Manning? What about, you know, the other top guys in the class? Well, we're not talking about those today, and the reason we're not is because we're talking about four-star prospect out of Dripping Springs, Austin Novosad. Um, this guy's a four-star prospect, but also a guy who is clearly on the rise, according to many, many rankings, as he's kind of elevated himself. He went from an unranked, kind of nobody guy, got his Baylor offer, and then has just, I mean, been on a tear. He's now a four-star, uh, top 150 prospect. He's a top 15 quarterback in the entire state. And the reason we're talking about him today is because the momentum is there. He got the Ohio State offer uh, at June 1st, so about two weeks ago. Uh, so that was a big part of his recruitment. Got the Stanford offer uh, before that and has really just continued to pick up steam. And as we're kind of moving forward in the 2023 recruiting class, the quarterback position is becoming more and more scarce. And you're seeing the top guys are pretty much all either committed or they have their top you know, three or four schools. Um, and that's made things really tough. And over the next few months, you're going to start to see a lot of these top schools who don't have a quarterback committed have to try something to try to get themselves in a position where they can actually land a high-end 2023 quarterback. But today we're talking about Novosad, and it's really because of kind of where we're at in the recruiting cycle. Uh, he's been committed to Baylor for a long time since December of 2021 so he's been pretty locked into the Bears and uh, he was the Texas District 5A overall MVP completed 63 and a half percent of his passes uh, 3,400 yards 40 touchdowns so he's a guy who has really kind of put it all together he put it all on tape got the Baylor offer after a camp performance um, in June of 2021 then committed in December of 2021 so that's kind of where things are at right now with him, but things got a little murky. June 1st, he got the Ohio State offer, obviously a massive offer for any quarterback. So we're going to go through kind of the background on both schools, talk about kind of where things are at depth chart wise at each. And then at the end, I'm going to give a prediction on where I think Austin Novosad will end up going and end up staying. Will he stay committed to Baylor or will he flip to Ohio State? So let's set the stage a little bit. Uh, for Baylor, uh, the relationships with Sean Bell, Jeff Grimes, Sean Bell, the quarterback coach, Jeff Grimes, the offensive coordinator, um, they've built a strong relationship and they've been in contact with him for a long time. There's deep roots there. Um, and, I, and I think with Baylor specifically, this was their first year with Jeff Grimes. So it's kind of seeing how does the offense develop? How does it grow in year two with Jeff Grimes? Baylor made a quarterback change. They went with the younger guy who had the bigger arm in Blake Shapin, which is a clear indication of what they're going for. They're trying to air it out more. They're trying to be more explosive offensively. And by making that switch from Gary Bohannon to Blake Shapin, it's a clear message to Austin Novosad that, hey, this is the kind of offense Baylor wants, and this is where they want to get to. And because of that, I think you're going to see a much stronger Baylor offense and a much more explosive Baylor offense in the future. Um, Jeff Grimes, if you don't know him, he was at BYU before Baylor. Uh, he coached Zach Wilson, who ended up being obviously a top pick in the NFL draft, and he's with the New York Jets now. So there's a little bit of history there with Grimes getting quarterbacks to the next level. Other part on the Baylor end, they did not take a 2022 quarterback. Gary Bohannon transferred to USF, so he's no longer a problem on the depth chart. Uh, like I said, no 2022 quarterback, so no one above Novosad uh, on the depth chart. So it's literally Blake Shapin, Kyron Drones, who was a 2021 uh, recruit, and then finally, uh, Luke Anthony, who's a walk-on, uh, played at Louisiana Tech, but he's only got this next year of eligibility. So when Novosad gets here, it'll literally be Shapin, Drones, and then him as far as quarterbacks that could be eligible to be the starting quarterback for Baylor in 2023. 
moving on to Ohio State. So they offered on June 1st, and this was after Austin Novosad went up there for a camp visit, ended up camping in front of Ryan Day and Corey Dennis, uh, Ryan Day, the head coach, Corey Dennis, the QB coach there at Ohio State, and they offered him. Right after that camp performance, he came home, immediately was able to get a return trip to Ohio State for an official visit last weekend. Took that official visit. It was great by all accounts. You know, you kind of look at the depth chart, you look at where Ohio State is at, and you kind of go, okay, they're a quarterback factory. They've had all this production at the quarterback position since Ryan Day has been there, JT Barrett, Dwayne Haskins, Justin Fields, and then now CJ Stroud. So there's a history there. And you also have Ryan Day, who is a not only a head coach, but also a quarterback coach. So you essentially have two quarterback coaches in the room and selling all that Ohio State has to offer. Everyone knows the quarterback tradition at Ohio State is great. Everyone knows that's very appealing. It's pretty much a top five offer if you get it. And that's why it has been for Novosad as well. Their depth chart is a little murkier. C.J. Stroud, of course, will go to the NFL after this year, most likely. Probably going to be a top 10 pick. Then you have Kyle McCord, a redshirt freshman, and Devin Brown, a true freshman on the roster. A little murky there. A lot of young guys, guys who are kind of going to be on the roster for a while. And then they also have Dylan Riola committed uh, in the 2024 class. He's the number one overall prospect in the entire country for 2024. So because of that, it kind of, again, it's a little murky. You could get replaced. We've seen that at Ohio State a lot. They'll bring in a guy. They'll get that guy replaced, and then they'll move on to the next one. But on the flip side, if you do become the starter at Ohio State, you're most likely going to be an NFL quarterback. So now moving on to kind of where I'm at, where I'm at with this entire situation. So Novosad, obviously, a lot of interest. He went on an official visit. That clearly tells you he wanted to see what Ohio State had to offer, and he got to see that. And I think he came away fairly impressed by what the Buckeyes were selling on their visit. On the flip side, he takes his official visit to Baylor this weekend and this weekend has been absolutely circled by the Baylor coaching staff. I know it's been circled by Austin himself as well as kind of that date where it's pretty much going to make up his decision in my eyes. I know a lot of people have talked about this being maybe a two-week period, uh, which lines up, right? He's going to be in the Elite 11 finals at the end of the month. He's probably going to want to have everything completely solidified by then so that he can represent his school at the Elite 11 finals. So in my opinion, I don't think this is a two and a half week process. I think he takes his official visit to Baylor and then he either solidifies things on Sunday that it's Baylor, no one else, this, this is a done deal, or he takes more time and then that's where Ohio State, I think, would really come in and make up some ground heading into the Elite 11 Finals. I think we're going to know a lot after this weekend. My prediction on this I think Austin Novosad ends up signing with Baylor in December. I think he will end up being a Bear early and rolling at Baylor as well. On the flip side, for all the Ohio State fans out there, don't be too alarmed by this prediction. Ohio State's got Brock Glenn, quarterback out of Tennessee, a four-star quarterback, in on an official visit this weekend, and I actually think he will be the Buckeyes' 2023 quarterback in this recruiting class. That's where it's at. Big news on both fronts. If Ohio State lands Brock Glenn or Austin Novosad, that fan base should be very, very happy. Baylor, on the other hand, has to figure out a way to keep their guy. But for Grayson Grunhafer, this has been CFP with JD.